This is Tova Martin talking for the Litchfield Garden Club, and we're doing a tour of the Litchfield Garden Club's 100th anniversary tour of Litchfield Gardens. We're starting at the Oliver Wolcott Senior Garden in on South Street in Litchfield, and this garden is a designer's garden, really. Um, the owner put in so much design knowledge that the border, they took, it's a combination of the historic, the original historic borders, and they infused a lot of new plant material into it. In this garden, we have a lining of Coreopsis with a chartreuse ladies' mantle. There's a lot of Tradescantia in it and a lot of lupins. This property is famous for lupins and some flocks, but basically it's a historic garden. These were the many of the plants that were originally here. Here we have tiny, lovely little iris combined with the ladies' mantle and the Coreopsis. There's a peony that was probably here originally. It's okay. combined with the Tradescantia and the geranium. The Baptisia might have been original. It's certainly a native plant and could have been grown at Oliver Wolcott Sr.'s time. Here we have the section of the garden that was originally where it ended, or when, where it ended when the owner arrived. And what they did was they finished, it, they finished it off, adding a little sculpture in the middle. But it's spirea of all different types, all different sorts of spirea, including the historic bridal veil spirea. So this is the original apple tree that the statue of George III was melted down by the citizens of Litchfield to make uh, ammunition during the Revolutionary War. This is the pool area and you know how to incorporate a, a pool into a historic area. This pool is looks rather modern, but what they've done is they've added sort of very historic elements like, for example, these doors that we're coming to right now. This, Those doors look almost, definitely look like they could been, have been around the revolutionary time. So this lovely, lovely courtyard garden, this is the garden inside the pool area for a little pool house, and it's a cottage garden, really. I, it, there are all the elements of a cottage garden, the oriental poppies, the uh, foxglove, the peonies, the ladies' mantle, there's goat's beard here, uh, primroses. It's, it's, it really says cottage garden. Notice the use of the vines and this is climbing hydrangea and they've used it to soften this probably historic but maybe not stone wall that that is in the garden this is an old rose it could be any old rose but what they've done is they've used it to soften the utility shed for the pool then they took and they made this very beautiful sluice way that goes into a bog that they've got on the property. This property actually goes down to the Bantam River. They lost the original, most of the original apples in the orchard, but they have this lovely orchard of probably crab apples uh, growing, looking up toward the house with bench work painted what they call Litchfield Green, which is as close as you'd ever want to come to black, and it, uh, it, it's just a lovely, very, very designed element to the garden. What to do with the edge of your property? Well, how about just taking geraniums and ferns and l clover and letting them interweave, just do a little tapestry. He's also got a lot of ladies' mantle toward the edge of the property, but it's letting nature take its course, making a meadow on the verge of your property. For sculpture, why not use something natural like this willow sculpture that's just woven into a frame in the middle of the garden and, and just grows from there. And then we have sunflowers and artichokes, all good things, uh, lupins, just in a, I see some baptisia there, all in a, in a lovely little garden. This is a lovely pocket garden, and it has metarothe, electrum, on the edges, and chives, actually. But I, it, the theme of this garden is a rose garden, and they have many old, old roses here. Some of the, uh, looks like some 
nozettes, uh, all kinds of old, old roses, including the shrub, uh, the shrub rose, Rosa glauca. Height elements, they used Joe Pye weed and the beautiful Rosa glauca that isn't so very well known, but it is a beautiful rose. After it finishes blooming, which will be soon, it has that sort of burgundy blue foliage. Next to it, we have the uh, the the meadow uh, the meadow sweet, and that's also giving a little bit of height and mixing in with the roses with lupins, and we move over to again the same theme, echoing the same theme on the other side of the the meadow rue and the lady's mantle. In this garden, they really just let everything go, that lived here when they came, go wild. Uh, they have the beautiful, um, uh, they have many of the beautiful uh, ligularias, and they have hosta, and they have uh, polygon polygonatum, they have uh, the willow, and it's all just intertwining together. Everybody needs a seating area in their garden, and if you've got a historic garden, why not merge it with the mood of the garden? This furniture, again in the Litchfield green, which is almost black, uh, is uh, perfectly, perfectly apropos for this garden, and it's backed by the lilacs that they found when they arrived. They used espalier, apple trees that are beautiful and quite old, and but they added this new garden with the millstone that they put in the middle as a centerpiece with a, a lantern, and they have it with the uh, hostas all around and the cranby, which is open gloriously for our tour day. A fountain. This is a big, huge copper cauldron that is very looks very historic, very apropos, and it's got hooker around it with anemones blooming their little hearts out and columbine also blooming, and the original some of the original shrubs that were found in the property. Red roses against the house with the. Uh, uh, more anemones and uh, estrantia and peonies, the white peonies. This looks like it's a red and white and pink garden. Uh, again, working the white house, the large white house, how to merge that into your property. They went with what, again, what works, what they found on the property, and it's so wonderful to do this with a historic house, to incorporate what you find. And what they did was they accented it with standard hydrangeas and then they used the ferns that they found originally combined with daylilies that work in the area and they uh, made a little semicircle leading into leading very invitingly into the house